downloading your pattern, save your file first to an easy to find location on your computer. A folder labelled bag patterns is a great place to start. Then open up the file from within Adobe Reader, ready for printing. As printing from a browser often prints out of scale. If you haven't got Adobe Reader, Google it and download it. It's free. I suggest you have a quick read through to get a basic idea of how your wallet comes together. Next, refer to the You Will Need section for your supplies list. After you've gathered all your supplies, it's time to work out what to print. The Penny In pattern comes with both pattern pieces and cutting measurements included, so you can choose your preferred cutting method. I like to cut everything using pattern pieces, however if you prefer cutting using measurements, there are cutting labels included with the measurements on them, so you can cut and attach them to your pieces as you go, so you know what is what. However, you will still need to use pattern pieces for any shape pieces like the welts and the flap pieces. Whether you choose to cut using pattern pieces or measurements, please stick with your choice of either imperial or metric measurements as you work through the pattern. While accuracy in measuring is less important in a larger bag, with this wallet cutting measurements and accurate seaming are very important to achieve professional results. Seam allowances are included and are 1 cm or 3 8 of an inch. And where it differs, I will point that out as we work through the pattern. Next, test print one of the pattern pages and check to see if it is printing to scale by measuring the test square provided. If it has, print all of the pages as required. Once you have printed all of your pattern pieces, then check each page for correct scale. I know it seems tempting to just check one or two pages only, but I have had more than one person who has encountered a problem on just one page among a whole bunch of them, so it's really worth checking every page just to be sure. If your test squares are printing to scale, you're good to go. If you find they are not though, there are a few things to check. Firstly, make sure you have your printer set to actual size, print to scale or scaling none or something similar. Don't select fit to page. Also, printing from an iPad or a tablet is often inaccurate, so I suggest printing from a desktop or a laptop. Another common problem is Windows 10 combined with older versions of Adobe Reader, so if you're using Windows 10, please make sure to update to the latest version. Once you know your pattern pieces have all printed to scale, you can go ahead and cut them out. Cut on the outside of the solid line, not inside the line and not right smack on it. Some of the pattern pieces are cut on the fold, so make sure you place the piece on the fold where indicated. Also, a couple of the pieces are too large to fit on one page, so need to be joined, and you do this by overlapping the top piece onto the joiner tab on the bottom piece, and sticky taping them together. When cutting the welts, make sure one is cut reversed. I do this simply by putting my fabric either right or wrong sides together, and then pin and cut both at once. When cutting card pockets B1 and B2, remember to cut B2 using the full pattern piece and B1 is cut on the dotted line. You can just fold the pattern piece on this line to cut so that you have the pattern piece intact for future use. I actually like to pin the cutting labels to these pieces to avoid confusion later on. It's also the same situation for the zipper pockets B outer and lining. Make sure you cut the outer using the full pattern piece and the lining is cut on the dotted line. Also take note of the grain line on the card pockets A piece. This piece is placed crosswise on the fabric. This matters most if you are using a directional fabric, so that you end up with the fabric design running the same direction as the rest of your lining pieces. I wasn't paying attention. Whoopsie! And I cut it the other way. A few people have mentioned to me that they find the strap a little short for them, so you may like to consider making your strap a bit longer. You may need to cut two pieces and join them to get the desired length. We have a fun jazzy strap picture tutorial by Ellen on the blog showing you a great way to make joined straps and also how to cut and join to avoid getting a bulky seam across the strap, which may interfere with your strap slider.
Once you have everything cut out, it's time to fuse your interfacing to the wrong side of their corresponding fabric pieces. To do this, put your fabric wrong side up on your ironing board, then place the interfacing glue side down onto your fabric. You can tell which side is the glue side by feeling it. It's the rough side. Then iron it into place. Keep your iron moving so you don't get iron marks and then check to see if it's properly fused by looking to see if the interfacing will come away from the fabric anywhere around the edges. If it does, iron it some more. At this point, you may be feeling tempted to interface more of the pieces than suggested in the pattern. However, please make this first one as suggested. Extra interfacing adds a lot of extra bulk, which you really don't need, and can make sewing the wallet quite a difficult task. Later on, when you make more of them, you may decide to add more interfacing based on how your machine is coped or where you personally feel you need it. You'll be better able to judge this after you have made at least one. Don't forget to centre and fuse the tab fleece into place. If you have a preference, fuse it to the side that will face outwards once you are finished. When cutting your vinyl ID window, I find it easier to cut if I tape the back of the pattern piece to the vinyl so it doesn't shift while I cut. The Decaville 1 and Card Pockets A and B interfacings are applied during construction, so don't worry about those at this point. Great! Now we have all the preparation done, and that's the hard part. So now it's time to get sewing.